An activist in Baltimore says she was kicked off the city's Gay Rights Commission for using the wrong pronoun to describe a rapist. Trace Gallagher has more on this story, which we should clarify is real. Trace? Yeah, hi, Tucker. Julia Beck was offered the chance to join Baltimore Mayor Catherine Pugh's LGBTQ commission. Beck thought it was a prime opportunity for her to voice the concerns of the underrepresented. But as the only lesbian on the commission, Beck claimed she immediately felt excluded. She even wrote an article titled How I Became the Most Hated Lesbian in Baltimore. Beck writes that she committed the unforgivable, saying she believes that even if a male identifies as a female, he's still a male. And she cited the case of conviction Convicted rapist Karen White, who is legally a man, admitted to raping several women and was then sent to a women's prison in the UK where he proceeded to rape two other female inmates. And after all that, it remains unclear if Karen White, who was David Thompson, is actually in the process of transitioning to a woman. But according to Julia Beck, questioning White's gender was the final straw, and she was kicked off the commission, writing, quote, after a months long witch hunt, I was found guilty of violence. My crime? Using male pronouns to talk about a convicted male rapist who identifies as transgender and prefers female pronouns. It is far more criminal for me to call a male rapist he than it is for him to rape. We contacted the Baltimore mayor's office. It had no comment. Tucker. Trace Gallagher, thank you very much for that. Julia Beck joins us now on set. Julia, thanks very much for coming on. Thanks for um, having me. So you said something that I think many people would in their hearts think is obvious, but very few people are willing to say out loud. You said it knowing you would likely be punished for saying it, but you said it anyway. Why did you do that? I believe in the truth. I believe that people should have these conversations and say things that matter without uh, fear of um, punishment. You are old fashioned. <laughs> Um, why do you think, I couldn't agree with you more, and I'm grateful that you have that attitude, but why do you think it was important to say this specifically? Well, when we get down to it, women and girls all share a biological reality. We are all female. But if any man, if any male person can call himself a woman or legally identify as female, then predatory men will do so in order to gain access to women's single sex spaces. And this puts every woman and girl at risk. That's from the beginning. I don't weigh in on this often because sexual politics is a morass and it's, it's not worth it to be totally honest with you. But I have enough daughters that I, I care. And my instinct has always been this change in our society, which we never debated, the terms have never been clarified, is not going to be good for girls in the long run. Do you share that concern? I definitely do agree. Um, like I said, this puts every woman and girl at risk of male violence, and this is already happening in many states. In many states, men can legally identify themselves as female and gain access to women's single-sex spaces. And sports is just one institution where men are taking titles, scholarships, um, and this is a problem. So it, it seems like a real problem. Why wouldn't women's groups who exist to carry the banner for women raise the alarm about this? Women have been speaking out about this for decades, um, but we have been effectively silenced. Um, many women like myself have been pushed out of spaces that, that we built, spaces that are intended to include us, simply because we acknowledge biological reality. Do you think, um, I mean, you're a lesbian, you are in the same acronym as a bunch of other groups, including people who are transgendered. Um, do you think that makes it more difficult for you to make this argument? I mean, it, it seems like this has been so politicized that you're expected to have a certain set of views that maybe you don't have. I see where you're coming from. I would like to make a distinction here. Um, the letters in the acronym share not much. <laughs> The L, G, and B are based on sexualities. They're based on sex, biological realities. Yes. But the T is based on gender identity, which is not based in biological reality. In fact, I would argue that it's opposed to biological reality. The L, G, B is very different from the T, and I don't think it's fair to lump us all into the same acronym. Do you, do you find it astounding that it is considered an act of bravery to defend biology? I wouldn't say so myself, but it's, I guess that's where we are right now. And I hope more women stand up. 
Last question, because I, I can't remember. What did they say to you? You were thrown off this commission. You were punished for saying this out loud. What was the rationale for it? Frankly, there was no case made. Um, my accuser said that they didn't have to make a case. Um, one of the members of my um, committee argued that sex was a thing of the past. He said, um, frankly, science had progressed so far that sex was import unimportant. Um, <laughs> I argued the opposite. Julia Beck, at a time like this, everyone thinks, so I, would, I would say what I really think, but most people are afraid to, and you're not. And, and I'm definitely standing in admiration of that. Thank you for that. Thank you for having me.